a heart attack. Fast fatal heart impact. Past painful scars. In fact, I blast tasteful bars and past. I back up my actions. Fact, don't ask. Grab reactions. Jacked attack with every word. Then act with class as they hear me snap. I got nothing to lose. Cause I fought and felt the bruise. Now I'm not the one confused. Call the shots and they produce. I ain't boss. I'm finally loose. Pick a new soul bird's juice. I need the views to boost me to a new abuse of being used. Everybody wants a piece now. Y'all can rest in peace now. You're dead to me, so peace out. Remember you're discreet now. Get ready for defeat. Alrighty, hello, hello, everybody. This is Kirusho here, and now, before we do begin, let's give a brief little review. In the last part, quite a number of things have happened. Now, we had Deku. Deku, it's been two weeks since the war has started, and in this amount of time, Deku has done much. On the first day, he helped save Tartarus Prison from an attack by Jigenomakia. And Dragonomachia, he was actually forced into retreat by the good doctor. Right now losing him, one of their most loyal so soldiers, if not servants, would be a great waste. Now, Deku told the heroes quite simply, he'll come back for all for one. And the prison was put on high alert. Now, the heroes are going to have to make a decision. If Deku gets to all for one, he'll be on their side. If the villains get to all for one, he'll be released, along with the thousands of people inside Tartarus prison. Now, yes, that is bad, but there's also a simple answer here. What Deku plans to do is remove the man from the equation. Remove all for one from the playing fields, permanently. And Deku did so. He broke in and out of Tartarus with no one even realizing he was there, until the man's vitals flatlined. And by then, he was already sailing down river, downstream. And people, they were none the wiser. Whenever news got out of all for one's death, a lot of people realized something. Right now that means the League of Villains would only go after Tartarus for Kiragiri. But many still might believe this is a false report. Because, how can they confirm it? Now, the villains might think this is an idea just to take a shot to their morale. Try and weaken their resolve. So many of them, they try to fight harder. They try to stand with a symbol of evil. Show that the heroes trying to, well, take a shot at them, won't work. They'll stand there, they'll take the shot, and then they'll just punch right back harder. Now, right now Deku though, he actually is having something intriguing happen. Deku has felt the effects of one for all on his body. He had a rapid mutation with hundreds of quirks. And right now, Deku has all for one, an ability that is the opposite. Deku didn't have a reaction. In fact, he felt amazing. Now, Deku, currently, he's having many of his quirks mixed together in his body. Right now, there's the best way to describe it. Many of Deku's useless abilities that he's seen as not liable for battle, they're actually mixing together. And right now some of Deku's retired abilities or ones he just doesn't use, they're also mixing together, along with even some of the abilities he does use quite a bit. Now, what that means is quite simple. Some quirks are mutating. Some are actually mixing together to create new ones, to compact things down. It's like this, a larger file being compacted down and compressed. You can compact the files down to make them a smaller one. And to try and access them, you'd have to actually open and expand the file. So, that's the best way to explain Deku's current abilities. And Deku, he does tend to be strange. Many of the powers he's had here, he's actually noticing differences in them. New ways to use them. And right now, Deku, he's actually happy. For some reason, he wants this power. He wants this ability. He knew that it might be dangerous, but he took the chance. His body reacts strangely to quirks. And right now, he has the ability to take quirks. He has the ability to give out quirks. Now, it has been two weeks since Alpha One was murdered. And right now, Deku... He's been trying to lay low. Right now the girls, they've gotten airy, somewhere safe, and secure. 
and they're heading back to Japan. They know that Deku is going to work with the heroes, but they're unsure to the extent of how it is so far. Now, we do currently have where Deku, he's sitting down in a bar, and right now quite a lot of things are happening here. Now, right now Deku, he's sitting there, and he's waiting. He's been trying to find information, find ways to the paranormal Liberation Army, find out information about the villains, people in charge. All he has to do is lie in wait and keep up a disguise. Now, currently Deku does turn and look at the bartender, him asking the man a few questions as the minister back at him trying to inform him about exactly what he does know, because Deku just set down a quite hefty sum of money. Now, the man is trying to tell Deku that he needs to talk to this person and this person, to which Deku, he does want not. Now, Deku, he does want to stand up, him looking around the club before walking over. Now, Deku currently does walk over to an area, him actually going to directly step over the VIP rope and sit down. Now, the person they're sitting there on their phone. And right now they actually do go to look up towards Deku and ask him what does he want. Now, Deku tries to try to inform the person. He wants to talk. Now, security, security actually has come walking up. And when they do actually try and step over the rope to grab Deku, Deku does simply just go to turn. The person being brought upwards into the air, as you know, they actually are clutching at their throat. And Deku just simply just stand there looking at the man before looking back towards the person he wanted to talk to. And the man actually is going to bring his hand up, telling him, please sit down and let go of a security guard. And Deku does do so. The man falling onto the ground before actually clutches his throat. As the VIP does inform the security guard to leave them be and to possibly check on his own injuries somewhere else. They'll be having a chat. Now, right now the person has turned directly to Deku. When to ask him, what exactly is he doing here? He's not sure that he's on the list. Well, he might want to have to check it twice. Because I've been doing quite a bit. I've been looking into a few things. I'm trying to find... The doctor. The doctor? Really? You mean Awful One's doctor? Yes. The one with the League of Villains. I'm curious. I heard he had a project. I heard that he can give me a quirk. <laughs> oh, you're one of those guys, aren't you? I'm sorry to tell you this. The doctor, he finds unwilling test subjects. Yes, he'll find willing, but that's a very rare case. If he likes your abilities, though, he's willing to pay you for them. But if you're looking for powers, I'd steer clear of that man. He's done quite a bit. In fact, he was quite popular for trying to turn UA students into Nomu. He was unsuccessful. The progress was stopped. And those students were left different, you could say. From what I heard, they were shaken. <laughs> really? Well, it doesn't sound like they could handle extra abilities. They sounded weak. Weak, you say? Yes, weak. Now, do you know information on the doctor? Hmm, that would be hard to tell. Now, Deku, he's a bit annoyed, and another man to try to tell him. He wants money. He's willing to tell him, for a price. And Deku does stare at the man, him annoyed and frowning, immediately using telepathy. No. Deku does look into this man's mind, getting the information he needs and then shutting it down, as the man does go from leaning forwards to directly falling forwards onto the ground. Deku, with his hand, going to bring the man back up and sit down into his seat, before leaning him backwards and making it look like he had a bit too much to drink. Now, Deku does directly go to stand up, 
and whenever Deku does go to step over the VIP rope, there actually is a sound of the door being blasted open. And right now tons of people, they're trying to get ready. Right now the club is being invaded. And many people, they are on guard. Now, the moment heroes, or should I say vigilantes, do come blasting in, quite literally, many people are caught off guard. As right now Deku, he actually is going to take a step to his right and hide on the corner. Now, Deku, he does just stay there for a second, pretending like he's not here, before he actually just hear a blasting sound. And right now Deku is actually going to step out and look towards the vigilantes. As Deku, he does see somebody with a large face coming smashing in and punching Doki into the bouncer. Now, the man is flung across the room, smashing into a wall, as does hit the ground, and then trying to get back up. As right now their actions are somebody, the bartender, does reach down for a firearm and go to get Doki up. Him coming back over the bar and trying to fire at the vigilantes. Now we do actually have Kirishima, who he does him rushing in and towards the man. The man blasting at him as Kirishima does Doki dive over the bar and punch into the man at full force. Now, right now Deku does stand there. And whenever Deku actually doesn't want to take a step out, there actually is the group. As right now there actually is Ibarra. Ibarra actually came rushing in from the back of the building. And she actually does bring her hands out. And right now her hair does immediately wrap around the vigilante or Deku. Not vigilante. Now, Deku, he currently is wrapped up by his arms and by his body. And right now somebody does come rushing towards him, as Deku does do one thing. He brings down his right arm, pulling it free effortlessly, for immediately bringing his hand up and grabbing at somebody. Now, Deku does step forwards. And right now he does Deku to throw them backwards, as right now they actually go smashing backwards onto the ground. And Deku does someone to turn, looking around at the nightclub. Before Deku, he does do one thing. He actually rushes forwards towards somebody. Now, Deku, he does show off his own power. And right now the vigilantes, they're confused. They thought that he was a part of this organization, but he helps them take him down. Now, the group of vigilantes, they do watch. As right now, Deku is rushing up towards somebody, and Deku coming in. Him going to somewhat duck under their blow and bring his hand up. Him going to grab with his left hand the back of their shoulder, and with his right hand going to Doki grab at their top of their arm. Deku immediately going to push on it and break their arm, and just with his left leg, smash Doki into their back. And right now Deku does send them flying. Doki down into the ground, before turning back and with his right leg kicking upwards into a man's head. Before going to somewhat spin on his heel and immediately throw himself upwards into the air. Now, they do watch. Right now, Deku, he's showing martial arts prowess. And many of them, they do actually fight. Right now, they're not going to question it. This place is chaotic, the music is blaring, and they might have needed his help. Now, there actually is where after many people are taken down. And right now, Deku, he does stand there on the dance floor as he actually doesn't look around. The group of vigilantes showing themselves, and the man who does stand in front of Deku is somebody he's encountered before. However, the man may not remember it, as Deku does look towards Bakugo. Now, Deku stares at Bakugo as the man does announce to him what the hell does he think he was doing. Now, Deku does turn towards him. As remember Deku does take a step forwards, telling him that he really shouldn't be here, they're actually Zibara who, once again, moves to wrap him up. And this time, they're actually just Todoroki, who does want to step forwards and immediately bring up his hand. Him talking about how he'll freeze him if he tries to move again. And Deku doesn't want to step forwards. Him telling Todoroki, that really won't work. Now, whenever Todoroki actually starts to blast at ice, Deku does bring his hand up. Him swatting the ice away into a different direction and diverting it. Now, a lot of people do realize something. This guy is super strong, and that attack shouldn't have done that. Now, they do actually get on guard, and whenever they do do that, there actually is Deku, who does go to Doki, bring his hand up, and then 
go to bring his hand down over his face, ultimately changing back to normal. And right now they're all kind of stunned. They just attacked a place with Izuku Midori inside. Oh no. Now, Bakugo get, immediately gets angry. And right now he actually goes rushing forwards, shouting at Deku, What the fuck? Now, Bakugo actually is being held back. As right now there actually is Todoroki and Kirishima. Who, they do try to restrain him as Bakugo does yell out at Deku about everything he's done. About everything he has been just simply witness to. Now, Bakugo tries to yell at Deku. Right now, everything he's done is try to be a hero. But what Deku has done is murder. Right now, what Deku has done is willingly go to let them die. Deku was told to come forwards and try to step in. And yet, all he did was nothing. He heard about the operation involving Aerie. He may not have been involved, but seriously, what the fuck? Why was he working for a villain? Now, Deku just looked directly at Bakugo. And right now he just tells Bakugo to shut the hell up. Now, Bakugo is kind of confused. And right now there actually is one where Momo and the girls do all come walking in. And right now there actually is where they do see Deku. Some of them are actually angry with him. And some, they kind of don't, don't know what to feel about this guy. As Deku... He does duck his step forward towards Bakugo, telling him, if he wants to try and blame him for what he's done, he won't apologize for it. However, he already does know a few things, doesn't he? Know a few things? I know you tortured. I know you killed. I know this is all your damn fault. Me. My fault. Really. Really, it's all my fault. It's all my fault this fucking war started? <laughs> Damn right it is. The committee? You? The committee? Hang on a minute. You're blaming me for the committee. Yes, you killed them. If they were still around, then... Then what? Then what would have happened, Bakugo? More children would be turned into soldiers? More people would die? I killed them. I made sure they stayed dead. Besides, they murdered my mother. They murdered my father. They murdered children. Now, Baku just stayed there kind of stunned at that part. He heard about it, but directly hearing it from Deku, somebody involved, it kind of unnerves him. And then there actually is where somebody just come walking up behind Deku. Deku, or the person who's come to bring their hand up on Deku's shoulder trying to tell him to chill out, he immediately does one thing. He brings his left hand up, steps to the left, and grabs their arm, before taking a step backwards and with his right hand bringing it up onto the back of their shoulder. Now, the person they do stand there surprised, as they could just tell them that if they try to touch him again, they're going to have a problem. Now, currently the vigilantes, they all do stand there. And their actions are Deku, he does look at a lot of them. As he does ask exactly how many of them there are. Which Bakugo, he does stare at Deku. Right now, he has a lot to think about. And Bakugo, he does answer Deku honestly. There's a lot. There's ten of them. And Deku, he does want to laugh a little bit at that. Talking about how they really can't take him on. <laughs> what makes you say that? Bakugo, I have the powers of the Nomu, remember? Besides... I also took a few powers recently. Some good, one incredibly powerful. I'm sure you've heard about it. You killed all for one. Now, everybody really do stand there a bit stunned. And right now Deku does somewhat laugh with a smile. And Bakugo does look at the expression in Deku's eyes. There's... There's no way. I, I mean, they thought it was just... Something Tartarus said to try and get villains off their back, but it's real. Now, right now the vigilantes, they do actually feel a bit of relief. And Deku, he does look at the way they do act. They went from tensing up to relaxing. 
and they can just tell them all. As he does let go of Kendo, that they shouldn't relax. They go actually someone pushing her forwards. Before she does, someone goes stumbling into Bakugo, that right now, what they need to know is you can never relax whenever you're like this. In this line of work, hmm? what do you have? <laughs> you're kidding, right? Now, they can just look directly towards Asui and Momo, telling both of them he's not kidding. He's been doing this for well over a decade. If they want to try and relax, then they'll fucking die. Now, Degli does make a comment. It'll be like the USJ all over again, except he won't be there to save them from villains. Now, Bako, he does stare to get Deku. And right now the students, they all do stay quiet. Before Deku does tell them all. He was trained to handle situations a lot like this. They weren't. He was conditioned to be able to function under stress. Heavy amounts of it. Have any of them ever gone through mental conditioning? Have any of them had combat experience like he has? Now, mainly they do look around at each other. Before Deku just expressed all of them. The committee tried doing what they could to him. They tried to control him and whenever he got too far out of control, they tried to limit him. They gave him combat experience and limiters. But, he didn't follow their guidelines. He stole quirks and planned. What he did was go outside of their parameters. He made them think he was a loyal dog until he decided to bite the fucking hand that fed him. Then, he ran off. Right now they can say all they want about him, but they do need to know the whole goddamn story. Now, right now all of them do stand there. And their actions are over Hiroshima, he does step forwards. Surprising everybody is, is he does not ask. If he has all four ones of powers, then he should probably help, right? Hmm? I have been helping. I'm trying to figure out exactly where to go. I found a lead. But the doctor has been elusive. Right now the crime in the city has been going down, but that's just this one. I've been working overtime. I need a rest, a shower, and to get out of this goddamn suit. Now, a lot of people do look at the suit, and Deku he does comment on how he is happy this one was cheap. Now, a lot of people do stare at him, him turning and walking away, and right now they don't know what to say. If he's going after the Paranormal Liberation Army, should they go with him? Now, there actually is Momo. Who does immediately step forward and shout at him. If he has awful one's abilities, then why isn't he handing out quirks to heroes? And Deku does stop, before turning back to her. If he hands out quirks willy-nilly, do they think that they'll be able to handle it? Deku turning around, expressing. He's a special case. His body was literally created. And, well, made to be able to use power. Use energy. Use quirks. Right now, theirs weren't. If they think that they'll be able to survive the powers, they'll give them to them. But if they react negatively, they could all die. They have a chance at death. Right now, he's not hogging powers. He is trying to figure out what to do with them. Now, if they want the powers, then hey, tell them what one they want. He can hand over one. Free of charge. But if they don't think they can handle it, then leave them the fuck alone. Now, Baku does step forwards, telling Deku that if he's going after the Paranormal Liberation Army, then they might have a goal in, well, interest, in mind. Now, Deku does look back towards Baku, telling him, they're not friends. We never were. But you're going after villains and you're a vigilante, right? You need our help. I don't need anything from you. Of course you don't. What if I told you... What if I told you we had something? <laughs> I'd say you're lying. I could just look into your head, take it by force. 
what if I told you that won't help? What if I told you we also had Momo? Now, Momo doesn't want there to look at Bakugo. Her asking, what is he doing? Momo has tons of money. She can help us. She's been supplying our operations and getting us gear. Okay? She has billions at her disposal. Now, Degata does actually somewhat look towards her. And I know she actually does want free, so Degata put his eyes directly on her. Monsieur Yorozu, is this true? Yes. Um, well, um, it is true I've been supplying us with gear and much stuff, but I, I, I don't exactly know what you would need. Hmm. Now, Deku, he does bring his hand out. And immediately, go to put it down in those jackets. Him pulling out a phone and thinking for a second. Telling them that he's going to give them this, tossing it over. And Baku does actually bring his hand up, catching the phone as Deku does tell him. Right now, he has his info. Right now, he has his phone. He's going to get another one. He has one back at the base. There's a number in there listed as two. That's it. That contact information is what he does need to get. Now, right now Deku, he does going to walk away. As Deku, he currently is walking away, there actually is Bakugo, who actually does try to ask Deku if he's ever going to stop killing. And Deku doesn't want to turn, telling Bakugo he'll stop killing when there's no one left to kill. Right now, what he's doing is exactly what the committee they wanted him to do. All my retired and crem is on the rise. What he's doing is being what he was supposed to do. He's serving his purpose. He is the black sheep. And if they want to try and help him, then they do need to know. Killing is the best option here. Too many villains will overrun them. And they would really benefit from not having to deal with multiple of the same people. It will lessen their problems. It will help them out quite a bit. So, he's going to go. In fact, he does have a meeting. Now, Deku, he does step outside. And right now, he actually is going to blast away up into the sky. And I really do actually run out to watch that. And there actually is Bakugo. Who, he does go to someone flip open the phone. I'm going to look through it. The contact information is quite simple. And right now, he actually is intrigued. Izuku Midoriya. Somebody he knew from the younger days. The simpler days. A kid he didn't get along with. An actual friend of his from the past. They they weren't really friends, but... God. The guy... He's... Fucked up in the head. But... Is he wrong, though? Should they murder the villains? Yes, they wanted all for one dead, but... Knowing he's actually dead now... His head, his head is throbbing. He just needs to sit down for a second. Now, right now I really do leave. And Deku, whenever he actually does get away, there currently is over with the villains. Right now, somebody, they actually are quite happy. They were given an ability, but the doctor, they were a bit more, well, let's just say, stingy to give them. Right now, their body might be doing better, especially because they finally found a good quirk to help them with their situation. And right now, Nine, he's happy. Right now, Nine, he's going to be helping. The doctor, yeah. At first, he didn't think he had much purpose to use Nine with. Much of a reason to let the man have a proper quirk to help. If he becomes too big of a problem, all for one would have him be dealt with. But right now, if all for one truly is dead, then they do at least need somebody to help. They are lacking in manpower. And right now, power? It is good. And right now, Nine? He's smart and powerful. Unlike Anomu. He isn't just all muscle. He has brains and tactics, along with being a team. 
So, the little group here will become part of the League. And the League, hopefully they'll be able to overcome this and take over Japan. Now, with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed, and have an amazing day. I'll catch you guys in the next part.